Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Is a 14 film periapical survey. All of the films are of the same size. This is the standard number two size film that's found in all dental offices. Six of these films are used in examining the anterior teeth, and then four of these films are used in radiographing each of the two posterior regions. Now, in the maxillary central film, we want to show the two centrals. Following that, we want to show the lateral and the cuspid. In the next, we wish to show the first and second bicuspid and the first molar. And in the last, we should like to show the second and third molars. Then we go to the mandibular arch, and in this view, we show the two mandibular centrals, followed by the lateral and cuspid, followed by the bicuspids and first molar, followed by the second and third molars. So this will be the technique that we will demonstrate. This method is a method of standardization. We will assume that more or less all people are of the same size, and so the same procedure can apply to all people, which obviously is a fallacy. But it works well enough in perhaps 80% of the cases. So first we'll have to standardize the position of the patient's head. There are three standard head positions. The first applies to radiographing all of the maxillary teeth. So as I look at my patient from the side, I am adjusting her head so that a line running from the ala of the nose back to the tragus of the ear is horizontal. Now when that line is horizontal, the occlusal plane, uh, now would you smile so we can see open please. Now you see the occlusal plane of her upper teeth is likewise reasonably horizontal. Thank you. Now as I view her from the front, this line, the median sagittal plane, should be vertical. For if it were not vertical, if her head were tilted, then an angle that would apply on the left bicuspid region would not necessarily work on the right bicuspid region. The second head position pertains to the lower anterior teeth, centrals, laterals, and cuspids. Now for this, we raise her chin by uh, moving back the headdress pads. Now open, please. Not quite so wide. Now raise your chin a little bit farther. There. The long axis of these lower centrals is, is positioned vertically. Now the mouth is open because when I put a film in there, either a finger or some device is going to have to fit between the upper and lower teeth to hold the film in there. That's why her mouth is open at this point. So this is the second method. Now the the patient, when viewed from the front, again must have the sagittal plane running straight up and down. Now the third head position, when viewed from the side, should have the mouth open. And we wish to have the mandibular occlusal plane to be horizontal. Lower your chin a little bit, please. That's fine. All right, the lower occlusal plane is horizontal, and this head position is correct for when we radiograph lower bicuspids and lower molars. When viewed from the front, the median sagittal plane, again, must be vertical. 
Now next, we will standardize the vertical angles that are to be used. For the maxillary central region, we will use 45 degrees downward, the same direction and number for the lateral and cuspid region. The bicuspids and first molar require a 35 degree downward angulation. The upper second and third molars require 30 degrees downward angulation. Mandibular centrals require 15 degree upwards. Lateral and cuspids get 20 degrees upwards. Bicuspids and first molar 10 degrees upwards. And the second and third molars zero degrees. Now we will modify these standard angles slightly depending upon whether the arch or the vault is high or low, whether the floor of the mouth is deep or high. Next we go to the standard film uh, markings. This radiograph will be used for, or rather this film packet will be used for radiographing the maxillary centrals. I have drawn a line parallel with the lower edge and a quarter of an inch from it, and I'll refer to that as my quarter inch line. In this lower left corner, there appears a black dot. This identifies where the black dot indentation on the film will record on the radiograph. I've also indicated the center of the film. This will be a useful guideline to orient the film packet to the teeth. Now the, the film packet is rectangular, the mouth is not rectangular. And so we must modify the shape of the film to accommodate to the shape of the oral cavity. And so we do that by folding back along these two diagonal lines. So the film is sort of keystone shaped. For the maxillary right lateral and cuspid region, Again, we draw the quarter inch line. All area of film below the quarter inch line will turn out to be black border. We will always locate the black dot in the black border. Again, we've indicated the vertical center line. The upper right hand corner has a fold line indicated. The fold starts at the center of the film and terminates two-thirds of the way down on the anterior edge of the film. Now, in case there should be some confusion as to which film to, or rather, which corner to fold, it's always, always the anterior corner. When we're radiographing upper right lateral and cuspid region, it's the upper right corner. If we were radiographing the upper left lateral and cuspid region, it would be the upper left corner that we would uh, bend back. The next region will include the bicuspids and the first molar. We no longer use a vertical center line on the film. Uh, another device will be used for orienting the film properly to the teeth. The upper anterior corner is the one that we will fold back. We'll start the fold about a quarter of an inch from the anterior edge of the packet and carry it down to the center of the leading edge of the packet. Then for the second and third molar teeth, we will use the film marked in this fashion. The black dot, again, always in the border, that will turn out to be black. And this is the quarter inch line. Now notice there are no folds indicated on this film. So each of the four film packets has its own individual fold. And then when radiographing the lower teeth, we'll repeat the same configuration. For the maxillary central region, we will use 45 degrees downward. So there the index mark is set at 45. This drawing illustrates how I'm going to endeavor to position the film packet in the mouth relative to the teeth. 
we will strive to have the vertical center line of the packet aligned with the interproximal space of the centrals and the incisal edges of the teeth should approximate the quarter inch line. Now we go to our patient with the marked film and let's see whether it'll fit in her mouth. Now you see it's impossible. The film is too wide to fit in her mouth. Hence the need for folding these corners. So I'll, I'll try to fold the film along these, these indicated lines. Now by doing this, I destroy the value of the triangular parts that I'm folding back. However, the interior part of the film is still flat and that's uh, necessary to record the images properly. Now we'll insert the film in the mouth and this time it fits. Now, miss, put your left thumb in the mouth, hold at the top center of the film and put your fingers against your face. Now lower your chin a little bit. There you see, oops, you're drawing it to the side. Right there. The vertical center line coincides with the space between the teeth and the incisal edges uh, agree with the quarter inch line. Now you've raised your head, so lower the chin a wee bit. Now we bring the x-ray machine into position and I want to direct the central ray at the at the uh, apices of the teeth. Now we can see this from the side of the patient. Now I wish I could say we always aim at the uh, end of the nose, but noses come in assorted sizes, so I can't do that. So we aim at the apices of the centrals. Next, I want to determine the, the angulation, uh, the horizontal angulation. There we have the white line on the underside of the cone aimed uh, directly down the center of the individual, right between her teeth. Now close your lips over your upper teeth. And now we make the exposure while the lips are closed. Then following that, we remove the machine and the packet. On this chart, we have the idealized position of the packet relative to the two teeth. The cusp on the cuspid is a little longer than the incisal portion of the lateral. And so it sticks down into the quarter inch border a little bit. And the center of the film lies between the two teeth. The upper right hand corner of the film uh, shown darkened is the part that we will fold back. So I will fold the film along that line. Now this triangular fold will also afford her a place to put her thumb. And now we'll return the packet to her mouth. Now put your left thumb in the mouth, fingers against the side of your face. Now I've positioned the packet so the vertical center line is between her lateral and cuspid. The vertical angulation is still the same as we used before, so I bring the x-ray machine into position. And we will aim the central ray, or the tip of the cone, the point of entry of the central ray, right at the ala of the nose. That's where you'll find the root apex of the lateral. Now draw the uh, lip up a little, please, so I can see a little more on the right side. That's it. All right, I'm trying to choose the horizontal angle to open the contact between the teeth. There, that's, that's fine. Now close your lips and we make the exposure. Then we remove the machine and the packet and that region is finished. The region of the maxillary bicuspids and first molar requires a new a vertical angulation setting, 35 degrees downward. So that's where we are now. Next, we turn to the chart, uh, illustrating how we're going to orient the film to the teeth. 
the quarter inch line that's drawn on the packet will run along the lingual cusps of the three teeth that are of interest. The anterior posterior positioning of the packet in her mouth will be such that the anterior edge of the packet will lie in the center of her cuspid. Now we go to the film packet and this corner must be folded back and it will be at this corner that her thumb will press to hold the packet in place. So we'll position the film in her mouth. Now, miss, put your left thumb in the mouth, fingers on the side of your face. And then I'll get my big fingers out of the way. There we see the front edge of the film is about in the middle of the cuspid. The, uh, the quarter inch line and the lingual cusps agree pretty well. Then we move the x-ray machine set at 35 degrees downward and the central ray is going to enter somewhere along the ala tragus line. Now it will be directly above the center of the film and at an angle that will open the contacts of the teeth. So the white line on the underside of the cone is aimed approximately between the first molar and the second bicuspid and in a direction which coincides with the direction we must look to see between those teeth. Now, Miss, close your lips. The exposure is made and then the machine is drawn aside and the film removed. For the maxillary molar region, we must change the vertical angulation to 30 degrees. There, that's proper now. Now referring to this chart, we position the film sufficiently far forward so its anterior edge is in the center of the second bicuspid and we orient the packet so the quarter inch line agrees with the lingual cusps of the molars. Now due to the curve of spee, the third molar is, lo is located in a different plane. And so in this illustration, the third molar's lingual cusps do not follow this line. So we'll concentrate on the second molar to provide us with the proper border. Next, we'll go to the film packet and, and no uh, corner needs to be folded back this time. Now, we'll insert the packet in the patient's mouth with the lingual cusp along the quarter inch line. Now, miss your left thumb way up at the top of the film. Now looking from the side, we see the front edge of the film is truly in the middle of the second bicuspid. Now we bring the x-ray machine into position. The tip of the cone, that is where the central ray will enter the patient, will be lodged along the ala tragus line and directly below the corner of her eye. All right, that describes the proper uh, point of entry. Now we have the problem of the horizontal angulation. Now, obviously, I can't tug on her cheek far enough so that I can see between her, her last two molars. So instead, I will have to use this idea of having the buckle, buckle surfaces of the teeth and the front edge of the machine parallel. In other words, these two sticks are, are parallel. Then we ask her to close her lips. Then the exposure is made. 
we removed the machine and retrieved the packet. For the mandibular central region, we'll new, need a new vertical angulation. So we direct the rays upwards, 15 degrees. Up until this point, we have utilized one head position for all of the maxillary teeth. Now for the lower anteriors, from cuspid to cuspid, we need a new head position. And so we'll position her head back so her chin goes up, up, up. Now open, please. I want to see your lower teeth. You need your chin up a little higher yet. The long axes of the teeth should be vertical. And of course, this median sagittal plane is likewise vertical. Next, we turn to the film. I've drawn these two parallel lines, and so I'll fold, fold back these two parallel strips, rendering the film narrower, because I could never get such a wide film as this to fit in her mouth. I have a small device here. It's a wooden bite block. It has a little crevice in it, which accepts the, the uh, edge of the film. Now she will bite in this crevice, or in this angle between the underside of the block and the film. Now I squeeze the packet between thumb and forefinger as I insert it in her mouth under the tongue. And then I simply depress the floor of the mouth as she slowly closes. Very good. That is how we would position the film in the patient's mouth uh, from uh, when using the wooden bite block. It calls for a minimum amount of cooperation from the patient. I can work faster when I use this method than when I use the digital or finger method of retention. This chart indicates the second way in which the film can be prepared and oriented in the patient's mouth. We will draw the vertical center line and the quarter inch line on the packet and then locate it so the vertical line is between the two centrals and the quarter inch line will lie along the incisal edges of the teeth. Two tapering areas of film will be folded back so that the packet can be positioned in the patient's mouth. So I take the film packet and fold these, these edges. So now it conforms to what we saw on the chart. Now we're going to use the patient's index finger on the side away from me. So I'll put the film packet in the mouth under the tongue now put your left index finger in there, miss. Press down. Now you're a little too far down. Come, come up. That a girl. Now raise your chin again. There, the vertical center line is between her centrals, and the quarter inch line is pretty close to the biting edges of the teeth. Then next, I bring the X-ray machine into play. And we aim the center of the beam at the dimple on the chin. Uh, keep your lower lip down a bit so I can see it, please. That a girl. All right, there we have the white line on the top of the cone, aimed directly between the teeth, and we're pointing at the dimple on the chin. Now, if a person isn't blessed with a dimple, simply aim at the midline about a half an inch above the lower border of the mandible. Now close the lip over the teeth, the exposure is made, and then the machine is moved aside and the film retrieved. The standard vertical angulation value for the mandibular lateral and cuspid is 20 degrees upwards. So we modify the angle, changing it to 20 upwards. Then we turn to the chart of this region. We want to include the lateral and cuspid with their contact located opposite the vertical center line and the biting or occlusal edges uh, along the quarter inch line. 
we're dealing with the lower right region of the patient, and so the lower right corner of the film must be bent back. So we turn to the patient and the film, and I'm going to fold back that triangular area so it will fit more comfortably in the young lady's mouth. Now I have a choice of using either the bite block or the finger method of holding the film in the mouth. Let me demonstrate the bite block. I fasten the bite block to the top of the packet. Now squeezing the film between thumb and forefinger, I cup it. Now as soon as I release, the film will once again flatten, except for this corner that I've folded. This cupping action will be useful as I insert the film in her mouth. I position it under the tongue. It's back as far in the mouth as it has to go. And then I depress the floor of the mouth as though I were doing centrals again. But then I move around the corner and now slowly close. Now we <clears throat> bring the x-ray machine into position. We will direct the rays at the root of the cuspid. That will be about at the, uh, at a point a half an inch above the lower border of the jaw. I can't quite get her down that far, so I'll raise her up just a wee bit. And we want to aim between the teeth. So right about, about like that is perfect. Now close your lips, please. Now we make the exposure. Then we remove the machine and the film and the block. And that one is finished. The standard vertical angulation for the mandibular bicuspid and first molar region is 10 degrees upwards. On a chart of this region, we see the front edge of the film is aligned with the middle of the cuspid. The quarter inch line is aligned with the lingual cusps of the teeth. We're dealing with the lower right quadrant, therefore the lower right corner of the film is the one that's sacrificed. Now we turn to the film on the patient. If I use the finger method of holding the film in place, I would orient this quarter inch line to the lingual cusps of her teeth. If I use the bite block, then it automatically provides the necessary border and I can ignore the quarter inch line. The lower anterior corner will be folded back. This is a matter of human kindness. Uh, this small maneuver will um, make the film far more comfortable to the patient while it's in the mouth. I locate the bite block on the top center of, of the uh, film packet. Now we need a new head position of the patient. The third head position, there we have the median sagittal plane vertical. Now open, please. And I'm adjusting her head position so the lower occlusal plane is horizontal. Now we insert the film, grasping it thumb and forefinger in the upper anterior corner, inserting it horizontally in the mouth. As soon as I clear the anterior teeth, twisting the film, now it's vertical, and then even beyond vertical, and then straightening it up, gently close. There we see the front edge of the film is in the center of the cuspid. Now lower your chin a little bit, please. We want to get the occlusal plane horizontal. Next, we bring the x-ray machine into play. 
and we'll direct the central ray to enter the patient about a half an inch above the inferior border of the jaw and directly below the bite block. The block is in the middle of the film and so we are aiming somewhere near the middle of the film also. Now looking over the top of the machine, we see the white line of the cone is aimed in the same direction we would have to look in order to see through the interproximal contacts. Next, we ask the patient to close her lips while we make the exposure, and then we remove the machine and then the film and the block. For the mandibular molars, the standard vertical angulation would be simply zero degrees. All right, on the diagram, we see the quarter inch line approximates the lingual cusps of the teeth and the front edge of the film, the center of the second bicuspid. Next, we insert the film in the patient's mouth, present it horizontally, and then rotate, starting it down between the teeth and the tongue. Now I want the front edge of the film between the second bicuspid and the first molar. Now point your index finger, make a fist of the rest of it and raise your elbow and then insert the index finger against the packet in that manner. The film must go back just a trifle farther. There we see the lingual cusps approximate the quarter inch line and the front edge of the film is in the center of the uh, second bicuspid. Now we bring the x-ray machine into play, directing the rays a half an inch, directing the center of the beam a half an inch above the inferior border of the jaw, directly at the center of the film. The horizontal angulation is determined by aligning the front of the machine parallel to the buccal surfaces of the molars. The lips are closed, the exposure made, and then the machine and the film are removed, and then the, the patient is dismissed. Thank you very much. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.